And now, Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding present the CBS Radio Network. Hi, fans. It's the Bob and Ray gang back again. Well, tell it out, Bob. Well, it just seemed like there were more of us here tonight than the usual. Mary and Webley and Wally is here. We have a a guest comedian who's going to come by to entertain us with a a stand-up routine that has been rocking him over here at one of those uh, avant-garde nightclubs in town. I hope he's better than the guest impersonator we had last night. And before we go anywhere, we want to salute uh, our station in Denver, KLZ, which has a big birthday coming up today. Uh, that's right. Today, KLZ in Denver, think of this, uh, begins, or all day long they were beginning, the 39th year of commercial broadcasting. 39 years on the air. It's a long time. They've done it well, and they'll continue to do so, and we hope you have a lot of friends in the Denver area, and that a lot of you have written to join our mailing list, which is still open, and if we send out stuff later on, you'll be on it to receive it. Well, I tell you, when you start your 78th year of commercial broadcasting... We're going to be saying hello again to you folks at KLZ here at the old Bob and Ray show. All the Bob and Ray gang will be doing that. Gee, hello, I'm with me. And uh, congratulations to KLZ. Hi, folks. The Bob and Ray show. I wonder what Wally Ballou would sound like in 39 years from now. Well, let's see if I can uh, simulate how it might sound. All right. right. It'd be pretty interesting, Wally. Let's see what you think you'll sound like uh, <sighs> when KLZ will begin its 78th year of... Broadcasting. This is Radio's Wally Blue. Yes, but you know, by then they'll probably have uh, microphones that will take the waiver out of you. Take the age off, yeah. yeah. Well, it's something to think about anyway, and I'm not uh, that old that I've got to worry about it right now. Look at how microphones have changed, Wally, in the few years you've been broadcasting. That's right, they have. It used to be as uh, big as a bread box, and now look at this, looks like a... uh, Salt and pepper shaker. Yeah, well, one, maybe a pepper shaker. yeah. And they have them as small as a pencil, too, I understand. It's smaller than a... Than a uh, looks like a pencil. Uh-huh. A ballpoint pen, almost. Huh? Well, anyway, congratulations, KLZ. And now, Bob, if now you... Now, would you run on the clarinet playing comedian, please? And let's have a few words with him before we... A uh... little applause there, too. That's it. Thank you, audience. So thank far, you. Been thank you, ladies and Do you want me to sit beside you or go over there? No, the, you, you uh, can go over there a little bit later. Oh, and, all right. Uh, but uh, sit here with us idiots first, will you? Right. And uh, sign in on our big Bob and Ray guest board, if you will, please. You are... Ronnie Harper. Ronnie Harper, comedian. And, Ron, I understand you're really breaking them up over there at the club. Well, thank you. I have a unique approach. I uh, I work alone. I always uh, wonder how uh, you two fellows can work together. But well, I imagine it helps sometimes. It's practice, yeah. It does help sometimes. But I work alone, and I uh, play a clarinet. I, uh, I uh, used to play it seriously, but... Uh, you started it. out as a clarinet player, is that right, Ron? That's right. I was with the McDevey Brothers Orchestra. You oh, probably have heard oh, of them. Oh, well, they're here often, yeah. I was with Larry Lovebreath and his band, mm-hmm. and I toured the country with your uh, small singer. Whatever his... I forget his name now. Uh, oh, it worked for us a few months back. I yeah. was his accompanist for a while. But now I'm strictly comedian, and I play my uh, clarinet for punctuation. And uh, to get bo- a maximum bops, I, I imagine. That's right. Uh, could we have a sample now of uh, the little act that you're putting on over at the <laughs> okay. top there? Let's give a big warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to <laughs> our comedian of the day, Ron Harper. Uh, did you hear about the fellow who fell out of the ten-story uh, window? Uh, cop came up and said, uh, "What happened?" He says, "I don't know. I just got here." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a friend of mine. He sleeps with crumbs in his bed so he can feed his pigeon toes. <laughs> daddy, daddy, can I go out and play? Shut up and keep dealing. <laughs> You know, I got my brother-in-law a job, finally. He's a lifeguard at a car wash. <laughs> See about the well, I think we've friend heard of mine about all we can take. He a party, he heard the drinks around the house. <laughs> Audience, you're really encouraging him. Last summer, we came back from the beach. My wife had a sunburned tongue from talking so much. <laughs> I think that's going to be it. And, okay, one uh, thing about the army, the food was real swell. I mean swell. <laughs> I won't say the room is small here. All right, will you run him off, please? Can you go outside to change your mind? Pull the curtains, please. Our 
clarinet playing comedian Ronnie Harper, our guest here on tonight's show. Ray, I think you told me you lined Ronnie up last night about 11.30, didn't you? Promised him the world. Yeah. Promised him the world. He's, he I seemed think just a riot to me. He had everyone at the... Well, uh, I can imagine if you're in the right atmosphere, it might go over. But... At the uh, the restaurant, uh, really rolling in the aisles or in the... Uh, Doesn't seem to have too much continuity to the thing. He skips from army jokes to mother-in-law jokes, things like that Pretty good, sort. though. They're pretty funny, those fellas, about 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Yep. And now here's the theme that ushers in our agriculture expert, Dean Archer Armstead. It's called Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Is that enough, Dean, you think, to establish you? Here from Lackawanna, New York, and the field station is, indeed, our agriculture expert, Dean Archer Armstead, and it's a pleasure to see you back here. <laughs> I don't like our stand-up comedian there. He's still laughing, huh? Oh, that was a funny thing I've ever heard. There was, but now I see the smile fading from your lips, which means you're about to get serious and... Like this... guard in a car wash. <laughs> I uh, thought you were about to well, get I serious. Well, I get a hold of myself here. What's new at the field station, Dean? Gather up my wits. Well, uh, uh, Bob, of course, uh, and uh, we've been working uh, all winter in the lab, more or less. We can't do too much trail work. No, of course not. Uh, and uh, I don't want to go into too many uh, of our cross-pollinizations of what we've been attempting. Well, it's too technical, I guess. Uh, suffice to say, you have been working on that uh, field, have you? Uh, that's right. Now, we had uh, uh, a young man come up to our uh, uh, place up there, Lackawanna, and, uh, excuse me, Yes, he came up to Lackawanna and what? He came up to, uh, I don't know, it looked like a station wagon. And uh, he came up to see us, and he said, uh, I've been working on, uh, on, uh, on a new type of bread and uh, wheat. A new type uh, of wheat? That's right. Well, eventually it would be bread, of course, you know. Yes. And uh, he had been crossing uh, small garlic buds with wheat. And uh, naturally, he, he thought he could uh, in that way uh, raise the wheat that you could make into a, a garlic bread. I explained to him that he was a nut. Well, uh, it's a good joke anyway. Ron Harper is writing it down there, I see. He must be going to use it. <laughs> Kick the time. Maybe tonight. Who can come? Well, that was uh, a bit of a joke. But uh, really, Bob, we've been so busy up there, and we're down here now to ask for funds. Oh, well, wait. We, we can't use the airways well, for that. I'm sent here as a committee of one, Bob, to ask you an array who are famous, uh, uh, generous uh, people. Humanitarians is what we're famous at. Uh, well, I well, wish you wouldn't true. go into this uh, but, uh, on the air because it's an embarrassing thing to say no in front of millions of people. Well, we don't expect you to say no when we tell you this, Bob. That we think we've got... Now you are crash. serious, aren't you? Right. I think right. we've got... <laughs> well, I... You say it that way, it makes me laugh. No, I... But I think we've got crabgrass against the wall now. And that's, sir. What does that mean? Hey, well, now that we get crabgrass against the wall, how are we going to get it off there? All right, uh, Ron, we, you had your tie. Now we're talking with... Uh, He's a very funny fellow. What uh, club is he at? We can't, we can't mention the name. Oh. It's right around the corner. <laughs> I'll, look, uh, I'll look around. <laughs> he's, he's really interfering with us terribly. And, uh, I wonder if you could see us right after we leave the air. Maybe we can work something out for you, Dean. I found a hand in my partner there one day, and the uh, guy says he wanted a match. I said, why didn't you ask me? He says he doesn't speak to strangers. And so with his theme, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, once again, Dean Archer Armstead heads back to the Lackawanna, New York field station until his next visit. <laughs> Here with us. Goodbye, Dean. Goodbye, Bob. Goodbye, Ray. And we'll sign you down for 50 fish. Just time for the lucky phone call, Ray, and it, the honor falls to you this evening. This is a, 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 a very unusual phone call. This is our first international lucky phone call. We've uh, called people all over the United States, but this is the first time that we have selected a lucky person in neighboring Canada. And also, it's the first time we're really going to give them something worthwhile, a trip to New York and a stay at the Bob and Ray Hotel and a visit here to our studio. Plus all expenses paid, right. but a little walking around money, too, that amounts to quite a tidy sum. So, operator, if you will, please, let's put in our call now to uh, Levis, Quebec, and to the home of the Pierre LeBlanc there, please. Hello? Hello? This is Bob and Ray calling from New Bob York. Bob and Ray, hello, Ray. Kent Lyle Birdley here. Isn't this a coincidence? I was visiting with my cousin here in Quebec, Pierre LeBlanc. Hold on just a second. Yes, Ray? Bob? 
Uh, sit down. I got some very bad news. What, a shock, you mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, on our international lucky phone call yeah. to Quebec. Yeah. Did you yes, get hold of Mr. LeBlanc? No. Guess who answered the phone? I have no idea. Kent Lyle Birdley. Kent. You mean he is the old time announcer, to... friends, for those of you who have uh, never heard the program before, who was here as our guest three or four weeks ago, and he's been haunting us with phone calls what's ever he, since. What's he doing there? Oh, We've been no, trying no, to get no. rid of him. Hello. Hello, Ray. How are you, anyway? Just and... fine. I'm sorry Pierre isn't here, but... Isn't it a coincidence I was here to answer the phone? Well, I guess... Uh, did you have your radio on when we called? Yes, I did, Ray. And Would you lower was... it just a little bit? I'm afraid we're getting feedback. Sure you know? thing. Fine. I heard you say you're flying the lucky phone uh, answer it right to, to New York City, Ray, and That's I'll right. be ready to leave in the morning. That's wonderful. You'll be our guest at the Bob and Ray Hotel for wonderful. a week. Wonderful. Yeah. Provide me with a good inexpensive way of returning to Big Town. Be good to see you again, and you'll be provided also with walking around money. Thanks a lot, Ray. It looks pretty good to me. Good, and say hello to Pierre. I'll do that. Goodbye, Kent. Goodbye, Ray. Oh, I'm telling you. You mean to say... It is stranger than fiction. You mean that after all the effort for this international call, we we get the one person we don't want around here? Kent Lyle Birdley. He won, and we can't back out of it now. Well, we'll be here tomorrow then, I guess, huh? Well, there's our theme music, which indicates it's time for us to put on our hats and coats and silently steal away. Before we do today, we'll have uh, Sammy Kay's two cents worth in just ten seconds. This is Sammy K, folks. And I just want to get my two cents worth in. Wow. Yes. And until the next time, this is Ray Goulding reminding you to write if you get work. Bob Elliott reminding you to hang by your thumb.